What technology are you using to build and power your website? That's what we're going to get into in this video and talk about our experience that ultimately led us to building our own company's website on top of Framer. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we help companies like yours get automated with portals, apps, and integrations. This video is a little bit unique for us because most of the time I'm talking about the different tools and applications that we build out for our customers. In this case, this is actually about our own website and how we're using Framer to power what we do at Automation Helpers. So first off, just to give some background, I'm a business owner. I'm not a designer by trade. So most of the videos I've seen out there talking about Framer are coming at it from a designer's perspective. And that's super valuable, but I don't find a lot of value in saying, hey, Webflow or Framer, because addressing it at a designer's perspective is very different than from me as a business owner saying, what should I use to be powering my website? So here's some options I was considering. One was WordPress. Of course, we know it powers some large percentage of the web. In fact, my first job in tech was working for WPMU Dev, which does a number of WordPress plugins. And so I have a lot of experience with WordPress but I don't love the fact that oftentimes you're so reliant on third-party plugins, and so you don't know exactly what code you're injecting into your website, and then on top of that, you're causing lots of additional bloat that you don't necessarily need. Tools like Wix and Squarespace are really easy to set up, and they have nice templates that come out of the box, but I'm a little bit worried about it not being quite as extensible as I need for the future. And then Webflow seems to be the designer's tool of choice, if you're working with a team, build a large, beautiful site on top of Webflow. But ultimately, Webflow seems a little bit complex for someone like me as a business owner. So what were the requirements I was looking for when we ultimately selected Framer? One is that I wanted it to be no code first. Yes, I can code, but I don't want to have to code for my website if I don't have to. The next one is that I need a flexible enough CMS, something that I can manage myself and I don't have to reach out to a designer or a developer every time I want to make some change to the content of the website itself. Third, I need some elegant designs. I want to be able to future-proof my website so that if I need to make changes, I have the tools at my disposal to be able to have a nice-looking website. SEO is very important to us, and I want to have baked-in SEO settings, especially as it pertains to the CMS itself. There's a lot of different website builders out there, and sometimes the SEO functionality, when it pertains to the CMS side of the house, can be a little bit messy. I also want to have decent performance. It doesn't have to be quite at the e-commerce grade of things, but I need good performance as it pertains to SEO. And finally, I'm looking for something that's extensible. If I don't find the right kind of component that I need, I do want to have the ability to add my components and create them as I see fit. Okay, so let's just quickly touch on the pricing aspects of Framer so you can get an idea here. This was actually a little bit confusing to me when I first started with this because you get to a landing page and for a pricing page for SaaS, you expect, okay, great, here's the different pricing tiers per month that I'm going to pay. So you can see that this is $30 per site per month on this pro plan. And this worked well for our website. It's for larger sites, 300 pages. We have a staging environment. We can have multiple CMS collections, everything I was looking for. But if you scroll a little bit further down, then you're like, oh, there's this workspace pricing. And at first when I saw this and I saw, okay, four bigger teams, up to five editors or 10 editors, and I can collaborate on all sites. What I thought they were doing is basically having a per site pricing up here or a different model where you could pay per user as opposed to per site. I thought it was two different models, one maybe more for an agency and one more for individual companies. But it turns out you have to actually pay for both of these if you want to have that collaborative editing with your team. So in this case, our main website, automationhelpers.com, we're paying that $30 a month. And then on top of that, I've got myself and I've got my developer on my team and he and I are collaborating on this. And so it's going to be that $20 per user in this case as we're collaborating. Now it is nice. This is per additional user. So in my case, I was the first user. We're not paying for myself. So it really ended up being $50 a month instead of paying the $30 and then 20 times two, it was just 20 times one. Because Framer is so loved by designers, that means you get an awesome marketplace of different templates that are available. And you've got things all over the place, tons of different templates, and many of them are free, many of them are paid, but I consider them to be pretty affordable. It's not a lot of subscription pricing or paying hundreds or thousands of dollars for a site. You can see lots of templates that just look great that you can activate on your own. But templates themselves are kind of interesting. They're not the same as themes in WordPress where you simply one-click activate them and you have everything that you need. So here's a template, for example, and we like this because it's what's powering our different courses that we provide on our website. And you can see that you've got these different navigational components of pages, 
layers, and then assets. And with the pages, it creates several different pages, and you don't know if you necessarily need all of those pages, and then you're not sure what to do with those pages if you don't need them in the actual publication of your website. Do you delete the pages you don't need? Do you de-index them? Do you make a copy of it so you can refer to it, but you don't actually need it? There's lots of these questions that really aren't answered in the documentation and were a little bit hard to uncover as I was figuring this out for the first time. But while the application of these templates can be a little bit confusing, it's also really powerful because we have the ability to do what's called remixing. So if I find a template that I like and I want to use it for free, I can remix this. I can take aspects of this template and use it alongside my other templates. So let's say I really like this header here. I could go ahead and copy this, go into my existing site and paste this. And there I have it. I've got that component that I took from an entirely different template. So rarely do I find that it's really that easy to be able to interact with different components and take pieces of what you like and mix them together. One of the limitations I experienced was when we were trying to add a form. So if you add a new input component, you're going to see that you choose a service and they have loops, FormSpark, MailChimp, Get Waitlist, and ConvertKit. That's pretty limiting. I was actually surprised there wasn't a native forms feature as part of the application, but because there's really no server side to this, it makes sense that you need to use a third-party service. So what we ended up doing is using a contact form with FormSpark, one of these pretty inexpensive services to be able to capture our form entries, but then it was really limiting on top of that. We got a name field email and a message. And I was like, okay, well, I want to ask about their organization because we're a B2B company. And there's no ability with the out-of-the-box form component to be able to add custom fields to this. So this was way more complex than I thought it needed to be. In the end, we still use FormSpark to capture the actual form submissions, but we had to build our own custom component just to have a couple additional fields. Another limitation is if you want to block access to part of your website for subscribers or a certain group of people that can access that content. Framer does have the capability to password protect something, but that's more like if you're an agency and you want to be able to show a website to your client before it actually goes live. In our case, we were thinking of blocking off part of our website either for templates or for courses and asking for someone's email address to get access and you can't do that natively with Framer. You have to rely on a third-party tool. So in this case, thankfully, there is a really well-developed third-party application called Framer Auth that you could use if you want to do this exact kind of functionality. But it felt a little bit strange that I would have to rely on an outside service for this. The CMS functionality in Framer is really important to me, and I have kind of some mixed feelings about it. Some things I think it does really well and some feel really immature in the product right now. So on the positive side, I'm able to create different collections, and these collections are basically different custom post types if you're kind of in the WordPress world. And so we've got different blog posts, different templates, and then we're doing a lot when it comes to these courses where we have video content on Vimeo, and then we're hosting that on the website. You're able to add your own custom fields to this, so you can edit the fields and you can create multiple fields that are going to store that different structured data. So when it came to the lessons for our courses, we needed to have that Vimeo URL as opposed to a blog post where maybe we had an image. Now those field types are all well and good, but then when it comes to putting the field types in practice, so in this case, we've got our lessons, and this was a video, and I wanted to embed that video we weren't able to do that with a URL field. In fact, it had to be a text field in order for it actually to render dynamically on the page. So that seems pretty goofy to me that if you want to render things dynamically, you've got images and you've got videos, but instead they need to be text fields. But these are things I can live with. I think for me as a database wonk, you know, we build these internal applications and we do a lot with tools like Airtable. I was really hoping we'd have this nice structured data and we could just render these things easily on a page but it doesn't feel like it's quite there to the point that I want it to be. The bigger part that's terrifying to me is that I don't have an API to be able to interact with these records. I can't say, oh, I'm actually going to have a CMS somewhere else and write the data in. And then we also don't have the ability to export. Now we do have staging and production for our website, but I want to be able to capture a list of all my posts. So if the site goes down, if Framer goes down itself, I want to be able to have access to the entries in my CMS. And right now they make it super easy to be able to import data with a CSV, and that's exactly what I'm doing, but I can't export it. And so what that means for me is I'm actually using a Google Sheet to write all my content in with the different fields that I need, 
And then each time I'm importing that manually into the CMS, which I can overwrite the records, that I appreciate. As long as it's got the same slug, it allows me to overwrite the data. But I'm doing this because I never trust a website vendor. I want to have a backup of my own data. Now, another positive about the CMS is that I'm pretty pleased with the SEO settings. I can use different attributes that I have as part of the CMS and be able to use that to dynamically generate the descriptions. So I've got a short description that I then insert here into my page description, and we put in the slug structure here, and we can use other attributes that we have from the website and from the CMS. So you can see I'm very intrigued about what Framer's CMS has to offer, but I'm also a little bit nervous about it. And I'm definitely not the only one when it comes to these feature requests. In fact, if we go to the feature requests of the Framer community, you can see that in the top four requests, three of the things that I talked about, custom forms, password protecting pages, and CMS API are requests from a ton of different people. And that's what makes this all kind of interesting to me because I am blown away at the design capabilities of Framer. I absolutely love it. And they're shipping regular updates and we can see a number of these are really nice. We've got things like masking and we've got different updates to be able to do different 3D transformations. But then you can see there are super nitty gritty details like custom cursors on a website. And again, I'm not a design guy, but I can't imagine how many websites are like, yeah, we have to have custom cursors compared to the number of people who could really benefit from a powerful CMS. So my gut tells me that Framer is really prioritizing design features and is focusing on design teams. And that's where it might leave some people wondering, okay, is this the right tool for me? Because I'm a business owner, I'm not a designer. I think for me personally, I'm very happy to have a very design-oriented website. And it's some of these other pieces that I really hope will come along in the future. A couple more positives about Framer. I can't tell you how much I love their system for managing components on a page. I can create my own components. And within components, you can drill into even sub-layers of that and we can have different variants. So I was creating different variants for having my internal links on my website versus external links. Or maybe you want to have components that support dark and light mode. Or maybe you want to have testimonials that render one way or they render a different way. All of this can be done with components and variants, and it's a super powerful system. I also love just how darn easy this is to preview everything. So for one, when I'm actually editing I can see what's happening with all of the different breakpoints that I have and view this in one spot and it keeps it up to date. And then when it comes to previewing it, I can click this button up here. Boom, I'm previewing what this looks like. I can change to see what this looks like at different breakpoints so that I know exactly what I'm working with before I hit publish. I hope this is helpful for those of you who are considering Framer or how to rebuild your website. I'm really bullish on Framer overall. I know there's a couple things that I'd like to tweak and make some changes, but I believe in their team and I think they're gonna be good partners in the long run. If you have any questions about automating your business, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations. 